there's been an update to a previous Karen who went viral after being accused of stealing a charger on an airplane. It turns out that she may have actually been innocent. Here is what Vanessa had to say. Take a look. I am getting bombarded with harassment, flooded with death threats. Uh, so for context, this charger was found on the ground of an emptying flight where we were told to remove all possessions uh, because we didn't know if we would be getting back onto the same plane since there's technical issues. Um, I was coming from the back rows. Um, so when I picked it up again off the ground and not unplug it, it was on the ground. Um, I kind of like embraced uh, the people behind me, kind of showing that I had it. Um, no stealthy behavior here. And then on my way out, I told the stewardess she wouldn't take it because they cannot be liable for passenger possessions. So this man, he had been recording well before I got on, getting in people's faces about this charger. Uh, and then when I got on, I immediately told him that I would give him back his charger. Okay, so here are some details. The man who posted a clip of himself confronting a woman who stole his phone charger on a flight has admitted that he took the video out of a desire to go viral. In the popular footage seen by millions online, Eddie Orlano shoved his camera in the female passenger's face and demands to have his stolen charger returned to him. They had just been on a JetBlue flight when it was delayed. Passengers were told to disembark and Orlano left his charger in his seat. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we could continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. The woman who gave her name to dailymail.com as Vanessa picked it up, then offered to hand it to flight attendants. When they refused to take it, she kept holding, she kept hold of it before returning to the plane for takeoff. That's when Orlano confronted her and accused her of theft. Orlano waited nearly a year before uploading his exchange on TikTok, by the way. Uh, here's some more details. In an interview with Inside Edition on Thursday, he confessed he only posted it in the hopes of becoming internet famous. So I said, I'm going to put her on video, he continued, adding he was suspicious of her because she gave him negative energy right off the bat. The reporter told him, I got to be honest, man, it just seems like you were trying to make a viral video. He replied, honestly, yeah, you're probably right. Vanessa described her shocked reaction when Orlano approached her but with his camera rolling. He didn't give anyone a chance to even say anything. He just kept coming at me being like, you stole it. Why did you steal it? You stole my charger. Vanessa said that Orlano was definitely trying to cause a scene when he took the video. It seems like this worked out okay for him just uh, since he just sold the video and can hopefully buy some charger, she said with a smirk. Vanessa revealed that she had received death threats after the clip was posted. Look, first of all, this is very threatening behavior as a female to be approached by a man this way. It's scary and it's not okay that he did that, especially to a female. Uh, to anyone, it's not okay. Uh, on top of that, look, I don't want to be all like TikTok culture is annoying and dangerous, but I really think it is. TikTok <laughs> culture is annoying to me. I hate it. When people are baiting people into stressful situations that could potentially damage their reputations, this girl got death threats because of what this guy just like randomly did to her because she gave him a bad vibe, whatever that even means. Maybe he thought she was cute and like, she was like, no, thank you. But you know, they all just want to go viral this isn't actually worth a whole lot. Like going viral doesn't mean a whole lot in most people's lives. People I see in comment sections sometimes they get so excited because their comment gets like a thousand or 2000 likes. I'm like, it doesn't mean anything. Your life will not fundamentally change because of this. You're not an influencer now. We have a societal problem. And honestly, we should have seen it coming. What do you think, Jackson? Yeah, I think that a lot of what you're saying uh, represents just the whole situation of the country right now. I mean, a game show host, reality TV star mm -hmm. has captivated millions of people in this country to the point that he's a God figure to them. And everything's about being famous. Everything's about being a celebrity. And it's not that there's no dividends that get paid with that. But now, you know, it's just fame for fame's sake alone. You know, so it, you, you definitely got a good point with that. And to the first thing I was thinking with this is like maybe he, you know, flirted with her and she just seemed uninterested. And he was like or something like that. Don't know that, you know, we didn't see that. Who knows? But oftentimes men will, you know, uh, do things like this or something similar if they get rejected or feel like they've been rejected. But we don't know that. But at the end of the day, 
it's just a charger, man. Like you're an adult, you know, if, if, if I saw, if I was on a plane in a situation like this and someone had my charger, I'd just politely and calmly, you know, try to convey that. I think this is mine, and, you know, like, and then if they really got crazy about it, I'd just be like, okay, whatever. And I'd go buy another one, mm -hmm. you know, like, cause they, I'm, you know, like I have, I have a lot to lose. I've lived long enough to be like, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cause a scene or get into a fight with this person. Obviously, and it's a woman too, as you said, stuff like that can be scary. Um, but yeah, I think the the biggest highlight of this whole story is just kind of the the influencer TikTok culture um, that has really gone too far in this country, um, and it can impact people's lives, uh, such yeah. as you getting death threats and stuff like that. Yeah, and I, like I'm really trying not to be like this you know, disgruntled millennial who doesn't like social media, but I am that <laughs> disgruntled millennial who does not like social media. And I always say, you know, you're welcome to follow me on my Instagram, but if you do, like, you're not going to get a whole lot from me. I think the last time I posted a picture on my actual feed was, I don't know, months ago when I was in Boston, whenever that was. And then even on my story, like it's nothing, like it's, it's just like stuff I'm doing around my house. So it's really not exciting, but on top of that, I think there is something to be said for people who want to go viral, right? What do they think they're going to get out of that, right? I think it's very easy whenever we're online all the time to get this idea that the world is a lot smaller than it actually is as far as, you know, different circles and groups of people, right? You can have 20 million people watching a live stream, but when you go out into the world, maybe you run into someone who is just like never even heard of what you're talking about. But as you're there watching that live stream with people, you think it's the entire world. Everyone knows about this. Everyone has heard this story. Everyone knows who this person is. Everyone is engaged here. So you want that relevance and you crave it. But then when you go out into the world, you realize most people are just living their lives trying to you know, just deal with their families and themselves and their jobs and all these things. And one of the things that I really dislike about social media is that it just helps people to lose that perspective on what life actually is a lot quicker than I think they otherwise would. Not that people can be disillusioned because life is crazy, but, you know, I don't think social media is helping any of that. Uh, any final thoughts before we get a break, Jackson? Yeah, I think um, just real quick, you know, I think just kind of the digital world space, social media, apps, and all that really exploded very quickly over the course of about two decades, uh, so much to the point that a lot of our, what we learn and what we experience comes through uh, some type of an application. And there's a lot of uh, positives and things that are good about that. And you pointed out a lot of the things that are bad. But I think that going forward, we have a lot of metadata that we can look at, a lot of research that has been done and will continue to be done on how we can have more of a balance in our lives, especially now that kids are using these types of platforms from the time they're one and two years old. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's a lot of um, room for growth. And typically, that's what people do. You know, we go, uh, people figure things out. Overall, I believe in humanity. So I think this is just another issue that uh, will rise to the challenge to meet.